This activity is on more dimensioning practice. It's also going to give us practice modeling some parts. Um, in these four parts, we have a quarter inch grid spacing on most of them. Uh, this number four, and I see they are num numbered kind of weird, one, two, three, four. Uh, number four is a one centimeter grid. So I'm going to dimension that in millimeters. And part five on the back side is, uh, on page two, is, uh, again, a quarter inch grid. And um, I'm not going to help you as much on the modeling. We should be getting a lot better at modeling components at this point. Um, I am going to help you more on the dimensioning. And then following this activity, uh, there probably will be a, an assessment of some type where you're going to be given a similar type component and have to model it and dimension it in one class period. Okay, so first of all, that's our introduction. And let's look at just a walkthrough of how you might model some of these parts. Uh, if you need the extra help, if you don't need the extra help, go ahead and pause, skip this video and go back. I am not going to help with all the dimensions on these. You should be able to figure this out. So what I did first on that first one, I built the entire cube. So I have a sketch of the entire cube. And then I did four, four cut or three cut extrusions after that. So then I cut away to make the L shape and then cut away the slot on the top side of the L, and then cut away the notch on the bottom side of the L. Okay, so that's, that's how I modeled widget number one. Widget number two, I did, again, the full cube, and then I had a sketch where I sketched and fully dimensioned the squares and the rectangle, and then did, again, a cut extrusion, so fairly simple. Um, widget number three, not a big deal. I started with a rectangle, then I added this trapezoid onto that, and then I cut away the corner. Uh, number four and five might give you a little bit more to think about. Um, widget number four, um, the big thing with that is it has to be a cutting lock. So we will take a moment and look at the, the part, but there's my, my front view. There's my basic overall rectangular block there. And then if I look at my other two sketches, my first sketch, I've got an isosceles triangle sketch, 10, 10, 10. I make it, made them equal to be isosceles. They, all, all the vertices of the triangle are... 10 millimeters from the side and it's isosceles, okay? And then the second sketch is on the back side. So if we took a lot around and look on the back side, it's again an isosceles triangle. It is 20 millimeters from the sides and 20 millimeters from the top. Um, and again, it has to be isosceles. They have to be equal to each other. And then what that is, is a cutting loft. Um, we could either do that as a cutting loft if you pick the triangles, or you could do it as an intersection loft if you pick the other shape. So either, way, either one of those would work. Okay, so that one is a little bit different. You probably didn't think about a cutting loft before, but that's how you would do that one. And this one here, again, a lot of ways to do it correctly. But what I did, I started with a rectangular base. I extruded up. I believe two and a half inches. And then I added the fillets and the round. Um, all is one easy step. Um, I added a sketch using the same geometry there to extrude out, kind of looks like a bearing flat a little bit. And then added the other fillets on the rectangular base. Drilled a hole, made sure it was centered. And then this sketch, you do have to dimension center points um, to drill the other two holes. Make sure when you drill holes on this part that you drill them as through holes. Okay, so that is really all we have for the dimensioning or, or the modeling part of this activity.